Welcome. I'm Pastor Kim Reisdorf, and on behalf of the San Ramon Valley United Methodist Church, I am so grateful that you chose to spend this time with us, to worship with us. Wherever you are listening to this worship service, whatever brought you here, you are welcomed. In this time and in this space, we are all seen and known as God's beloved. So as we move into this time of worship, I invite you to take a moment and prepare your hearts and your minds for turning our whole attention to God. You might want to turn off any notifications on the devices you're using. And I invite you to inhale and exhale and take a moment to just be grateful, to think of one thing this week which you can give thanks for. Whether you're worshiping alone or in with others, go ahead and say out loud, I am grateful for, and you fill in the blank. We also come to worship aware of the needs and pain and wants that we carry. And so I invite you to also consider what you yearn for as you enter this time of worship. How would you complete the sentence? What you yearn for in your community, in yourself, and in our world. I yearn for... We bring our whole selves to worship, and God, divine love, meets us there. Today, Today we celebrate Pentecost, and we'll tell the story of the very first worship service in a Christian setting. But before we get there, I just want to acknowledge that on that very first Pentecost worship service, there was sorrow. There was a sense of loss. Jesus had left this earth, and there was not a sense of what would, what would happen next. There was uncertainty that deep down knowing they couldn't go back to what was, but there was great anxiety about what would be. Our situation is different, but I think we carry those same emotions of loss, the awareness of pain, of uncertainty, of anxiety, not only because we're living in a time of a pandemic, but we're living within a week when we have witnessed the killing of George Floyd and we rise up in protest against that. We feel the pain, the loss, the anxiety, the fear, not knowing what will come. And so we need this worship service. We need the story of Pentecost to guide us into our futures. Worship has the power to change us. Worship has the power to open the eyes of our heart so that we see ourselves, our community, and our world differently. Our opening hymn Open the eyes of our hearts as an invitation to be changed, transformed by this time of worship. May it be so for us. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and then. Shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes 
glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Today we celebrate Pentecost, and one of the ways we acknowledge that is by having a lot of red, wearing a lot of red. And if you have any red around your worship space, feel free to go ahead and take a picture of that and post it in the comment section. We celebrate Pentecost aware that the roots of Pentecost are deep in our Jewish heritage. In the Jewish tradition, the annual celebrating of Pentecost, also called the Festival of Weeks or Shabbat, acknowledges two important nourishing moments in the history and lives of the Israelite people. The time of Pentecost was a time when the wheat harvest was celebrated. The wheat would nourish the people for the year to come. And this time of Pentecost is also the anniversary, the telling of the story of when God gave Torah to the Jewish people, those opening books of our Bible, that would guide them and nourish them spiritually in all the years to come. Pentecost still has the power to nourish our faith, to fill our being with the awareness that something holy resides in us and defines who we are. We'll be reading excerpts from both Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2. In chapter 1, you'll hear Jesus' instruction to his followers when he said, wait for the Holy Spirit before you decide what to do next, wait. Wait for the Holy Spirit. And then in chapter 2, we read how the followers of Jesus did just that. And this is what happened. Here now is our liturgist, John Green, reads excerpts from Acts chapter 1 and 2. While staying with the disciples, Jesus ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed, astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our native tongue? Amen. The word of God within scripture, the word of God within us, the word of God defining who we are. Thanks be to God. So there you have it a description of the very first worship service. I mean, picture it. I can just imagine what that was like. The light and people sitting calmly in their pews surrounded by stained glass windows. And there was great beauty. That's the first depiction of what a worship service looked like, isn't it? Yeah, it wasn't like that. It was more robust and creative and full 
of diversity and different voices shining out, saying that God's presence dwells within us. That very first worship service was chaos. There was bewilderment. There was mystery. There was an experience of the unknown along with the experience of something holy happening side by side. So if you've ever been part of a church and you think, oh my gosh, this is crazy, now you know why. It's in our bones. The robust worship of God is filled with diversity, with richness of sound, with many languages. What I want to focus on is what defined that first worship service was how people spoke in their own authentic way and words and language about the power of God in their lives. That's what church is. Church is when, is when our lives, our words, our actions express the power of God, relevant, happening in our lives. Church is not so much a building as the way we live, aware of God's power, aware of the holiness, dwelling in us and defining us. So I have an assignment for you this week. As we are the church that follows the way of Jesus, find one opportunity in the week ahead to tell of the power of God in your life. That's when worship happens. That's when church happens. So it could be around the dinner table. It could be over the telephone. It could be in your small groups that meet on Zoom. Or if it feels uncomfortable in any of those, call Pastor Dan or myself and tell us how one story of how you have recently experienced God's power, God's presence in your life. We need to hear these stories so that we know that what we say in worship and in um, tenets of the church is true. God's spirit fills us and dwells within us. Church happens when we speak out of God's power. I used to be part of a church growing up where, yeah, we met on Sunday mornings, but we also met on Wednesday evenings. The Wednesday evening meeting was called a testimony meeting, and people somewhat spontaneously stood up and told of recent experiences of God's power in their lives. I think that's when I fell in love with the potential of church, because church then wasn't a set of beliefs. It was a way of living and practicing our awareness of God, divine love, right here with us. We need to speak up, and sometimes we need to speak out. We need to speak up, acknowledging God's presence, but sometimes we need to speak out when we're aware that God's presence, God's justice, God's love, God's rule seems to be missing from our daily activities and from our culture. We're newly aware of that this week as we acknowledge the killing of George Floyd and as people rise up in protest throughout this nation and the world. It is time to speak out that something is wrong and needs correction. I was aware of a, a training that a colleague of mine did. Um, her name is Jane Elliott. She's a race educator, a white woman. And she said once to an auditorium full of people, I want every white person in the room who would be happy to be treated in this society, in general, the way we treat our citizens, our black citizens. If you as a white person would be happy to receive the same treatment that our black citizens do in this society, please stand. Unsurprisingly, no one moves. She pauses. You didn't understand the directions. If you white folks want to be treated the way blacks are in this society, stand. More marked silence and lack of movement. She continues. Nobody's standing here. That says very plainly that you know what's happening. You know you don't want it for you. Now I want to know why you're so willing to accept it or allow it to happen for others. Part of being the church that follows the way of Jesus is to speak up and speak out. Every time we hear an anti-black racist comment, 
whether we're with family, friends, or colleagues, we need to speak up and speak out. I think we hesitate sometimes, think we'll, thinking we'll ruin a rather peaceful or normal or friendly gathering. But in fact, that gathering has already been ruined by a racist remark. It is the way we let the holy move in us when we speak up and we speak out. That's when church happens. Of course, even in the story of Pentecost, there will be people that scorn or dismiss or critique what we do. Even in that first story of Pentecost, there were Pentecost deniers. There were people that thought, oh, those people must be drunk, the ones that are filled with the Holy Spirit. And there was another little sideways um, jab at what was happening. You'll remember in the reading of the scripture, someone said, oh, these are all Galileans here, and yet they're speaking in different languages. In the context of that time, that would have been heard as a criticism of the Galileans who were notorious for being linguistically challenged. People will always find room to criticize what we do when we speak up and speak out, and that always stings. But let that not stop us from doing it. I live with a deep regret of a time some 20, 24 years ago where I did not speak up and speak out. I just moved to California, and my car needed some routine, probably a smog check, um, work, so the, I took the courtesy van, and the driver of the courtesy van was driving me back home. We went by a place near where the Alameda County Fair would be held in a few weeks. The person driving the car said to me, you've got to go, it's such an amazing time, you'll enjoy it, but just don't go on July 4th, because that's when they will be there. I couldn't at first figure out what she was saying, and, and I was silent. And I have lived to regret that ever since. And in the decades since then, I've wondered what I might have said. I think I would have felt better if I said, and who do you mean by they? And listen to her response. Or maybe if I understood clearly what she was saying, I would have said, I just don't agree. I see it differently. Church happens when we let the holy move through us, when we had the courage and boldness to speak up and to speak out. So how do we know? How do we know if it's the Holy Spirit moving in us or if it is our own agenda, our own ego, our own fear? Well, we practice. It's not about getting it right every time. It's a lifelong practice. Jesus offers us some guidance in our scripture when he says, wait, wait for the Holy Spirit. That moment where we pause and check in, we wait for the Holy Spirit. And what we find is that we can tell the difference over time when we're speaking from a place where the Holy infuses our words and actions and we're speaking from another place. We just know like an inner barometer that indicates where we are and what is motivating us. And this I know for sure. We might start by thinking we're waiting for the Holy Spirit to come in and fill us and, to, and help us choose our words and actions. But as we keep practicing, we realize it's not like we're waiting. We're waiting in a space where there is no holiness, there is no, uh, none of God's presence. The God's presence is always with us. The Holy Spirit always dwells within us. What we're waiting for is the awareness that it is always there and already there, defining who we are in the world. That's when church happens, in the everyday moments that we allow the Holy to move us to words and actions. And our next piece of music celebrates that that is true in the everyday moments of our lives. May it be so for us. Gentleness, love through the world. 
that rise on your wings. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from blessedness. Wind, wind on the sea. You swept through the desert, you stung with the sand, and you goaded your people with a law and a church together is to pray for one another. And in this time when we're live streaming and posting our worship services in very public forums, we want to be extra careful that we get permission of folks, the permission of folks that before we say their name or describe the joy or concern, we want to be sure we have your permission to do that. So if you have a prayer concern, a prayer joy that you would like mentioned on a Sunday morning, please call the church office. All of our contact information is available on our webpage. Call or, call or email Pastor Dan or myself, and we will share those prayers in worship. Today we pray for Rebecca Bernstein, our youth director, who had an accident. And the doctor has requested that as she heals, she um, has no screen time. She's available for urgent phone calls, but will be slow in responding or not answering emails or texts at this time. We surround her with our love and with our prayers for comfort and for healing. Rebecca, we will hold you in our steadfast prayers. We pray as our country reacts to the grief and pain of the killing of George Floyd, and we pray for all who have loved ones, who have lost their loved ones. 
And right alongside that, we pray for our police officers, for they too are a part of our community. We recognize that many good and honorable officers are protecting the people that they have chosen to serve. May they, may all of us, continue to speak up and call out those who have lost sight of their calling. And now, now I invite you into a time of prayer, and then we will pray together the Lord's Prayer. And as we move into the words of the Lord's Prayer, I know they're familiar words, but let's approach them and let the Holy Spirit fill us so that we see and hear those words in fresh ways, for they too had the power to change how we live and work and play. Let us pray together. O oh God, our Creator, the first Christians spoke out, told the stories, and changed the world. They each used different words because the good news cannot be limited to one language, one story. And now put the breath of love in our lungs, the words of mercy on our tongues, and the song of grace on our lips. Holy Spirit, make your home in us as we join in praying together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May that spirit hold us now. One of the ways that we are sure that the Holy Spirit is moving among us is in acts of gratitude and in acts of generosity. You have been most generous with our church in your giving, and it is much appreciated. We also have tried to make uh, giving as easy as possible for you. So you'll see on your screen there, there's a QR code that you can, um, you can train your camera on the, the camera of your phone on that, and, that'll, um, and it'll take care of it for you. Also, you can... Um, Go to our website and see all the many different ways of giving. We want to thank you for the ways that you have helped us sustain our church and sustain the movement of the Spirit among us.
Dear God, thank you for sending your spirit, the spirit of the risen Christ from heaven. Help us, like the early disciples, to pray as we wait for your guidance and power. Fill our hearts and minds with your gifts of hope, faith, and love. May we share your love with everyone around us, and may we be a witness to your grace and mercy. We dedicate ourselves and these offerings that they may be used here in our church, out in the community, and around the world. In your name we pray. I have a few announcements for you uh, that reflect uh, the vitality here of our church. In no particular order, number one, our church treasurer, Larry Bieber, he's going to retire and he will be leaving his job in late July. We are very grateful for all his hard work and we wish him many blessings on this next chapter in his life. We are also actively seeking for a new part-time treasurer and welcome your prayers and your suggestions. Call the church office to get in touch with the search committee. Number two, our church campus remains closed. Bishop, our Bishop Minerva Carcano has asked that all United Methodist Church campuses remain closed through June and we will follow suit. A task force that we have here at this church is actively getting ready to meet the requirements set by our conference, our local officials, our departments of health, and of course insurance. Our focus has always been on creating and sustaining authentic faith communities. Thus, our first directive is to do no harm, and then we must also serve the most vulnerable. Number three, once again, Pastor Kim's email has been appropriated and um, has been used for things that she would never do. Please look carefully if you get an email from Pastor Kim and make sure it is from her SRVUMC Dot org account. Kim would never ask for money or gift cards or any kind of favor by email. She would call you or she would speak to you in person. She's really sorry that this is happening again. And finally, number four, our ministry of delivering meals with grace continues. This week, we delivered meals to two families with a child getting cancer treatment in addition, a lunch and a dinner were delivered to the sheriff's office in Alamo. Thank you for all that you have done to make the deliveries, to make donations, to make the cards with which uh, that accompany each meal delivery. Meals with Grace is, a nourishing, is nourishing the community around us, and we thank you for your support. If you know of an individual or a workplace that could use a meal with grace, please call the church office and let Patsy Kyles know. Our contact information is on our website. Oh, to serve in peace 
Spirit has empowered us, so we go forward this week ready to speak of God's power, God's justice, God's grace in this world. That's our assignment. That's the way we do church together. So may God bless you and keep you and be gracious unto you. May God grant you the grace to never sell yourself or God short. Grace to know the world is too large for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hands and reach out and do good with them. And may God take your heart and set it on fire. Go forward together to be the presence of God alive in this world. Amen.